I got two chairs. What's up, everybody? My name is Russ with rwgresearch.com, and this is a very short but brief um, update video on the OSD. Uh, so, I originally called this a printer, a 3D printer, and it is a 3D printer. By the way, excuse the giant mess on my desk. But anyway, it is a 3D printer. I've not printed anything with it yet. I've only been CNC cutting stuff. So, I wanted to show you what I've done. Now, thanks to those of you in the comments who responded to my, um, you know, how I was doing this. And I was doing this with a, with a controller. I'm just going to grab the camera and show you. So, I was doing this originally um, with the motor and spindle device that I created. And I was usually uh, originally using this controller. And this does not have a, a speed regulation of any kind. And you guys said in the comments, hey, Russ, find one for a helicopter. It actually does have what you're looking for. Aha. Thank you guys very, very much. So I did purchase one. This was not actually too much more expensive. So this guy is only 18 amp. Um, to get one for a higher amperage rating was about, I don't know, 10 bucks more. However, um, this motor at full load pulls 22 amps. I just didn't see the need to get a, a controller that would handle that many amps. So what I did is I got one that did 18 because during my testing I realized I didn't I didn't use very much at all considering it's basically a no load device. Um, considering you know you're supposed to put a blade on this thing. Anyway, so if I need to buy a bigger one I will, but I'm going to try this for now. And so far the testing shows it works fine. Um, here's the problem. So these have uh, capacitors on the input leads, and the reason that they do that is because the uh, voltage spikes on the system will come back and bite you in the butt and ruin actually the controller. I'm actually more concerned about the rest of the electronics. Um, if I burn the controller up, who, who cares? But if this system is feeding back into here, that's a problem. Now this uh, controller specifically says nothing about adding extra capacitors. This controller very uh, you know, specifically tells you um, what you need to do. And you're supposed to add a 330 um, microfarad capacitor, which is what this one is, 25 volts every 20 centimeters all the way back to your battery pack. In my case, I'm, I'm obviously using this power supply. <laughs> so that means I'd have to put one here, and I have to put one here, and I'd have to put one there, and then there, and there, and there. And obviously, I'm not going to be able to put any on this rail. I mean, I can't do it. So uh, I got, you know, I did a little bit of homework, and um, I'm going to go ahead and try just adding a bunch of capacitors right here at the motor controller. I'm actually going to connect them um, probably in between these jumpers. Just make a little circuit board that attaches to this guy. Now, you, got, you RC guys out there can tell me what you think. I've heard people say that they don't do any capacitors and they haven't had a single failure. And, uh, you know, and then they obviously rule out that you definitely should put some on here. I obviously can put another bank back here at the power supply or near this board just to try to keep any extra voltage spikes out. Now, what's weird to me is they're using low ESR internal resistance capacitors and the only ones I could find are 470s. They recommend 330s. I have no idea if there's a resonance uh, and that's the why they want to use the the particular size. But this is all I got for now. I'll order some different ones maybe. Um, maybe it really doesn't matter. But I would think you'd actually use high voltage suppression capacitors. You know the um, the, the, the mylar type or uh, or something similar. Maybe not mylar but whatever they are made out of. Some ceramic or whatever. But it's kind of weird to me that they use this type of capacitor, which is an electrolytic capacitor. But whatever. They're experts. They design this circuit. This is what they specify. So back to the helicopter version. So this does do speed regulation. It's pretty cool because it'll actually regulate the speed um, and kind of slow it down. And it'll um, when you're running this speed controller and you grab it, you can totally hear it. It doesn't care. It's just setting a... Uh, an output and it's running with it. And this one actually works really well. So when you hold it, it just, it, 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 I mean, you can't audibly notice much of a difference at all. And then you let it go and it revs up and comes back down. So the idea behind why that's important, 
Okay. So the RC guys would know when you're driving, when you're riding a when you're flying a helicopter, you change the pitch of the blade, and you want to keep a constant speed, no matter no matter where the stick is at. So that's why it's important on a helicopter situation. Now, for me, why is it important? Uh, and people make a really valid point. Crickets over there, and I'm glad that you guys did this because you made a valid point. The valid point is that when you're cutting a certain RPM, uh, if I go down or up 100 RPM, so that'd be like a 200 RPM range, let's just say, that could throw things off. Um, the cutters are specific for a speed, for what material you're using, and if you're bogging the system down, it doesn't know it. And so you have to try to keep that constant speed, which um, is really just something I didn't even think of, but is very, very true. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up the system. I was going to show you guys in detail of how to like make this work, but it's, it's not necessary in my opinion. So I'm going to connect this thing up, and I'm going to show you what it sounds like, and then I'm going to switch the motors and show you what it, or the speed controllers and show you it, what it sounds like, and there you go. All right. So I've got the old controller on here, the 25 amp turnkey. So we're going to give it a go. I'm going to put it at some speed, and I'm going to try to hold it. And uh, I recommend not doing this. Now I'm holding it on the outside of this, and you can imagine um, this is a lot more stopping power than what's on a teeny tiny cutter. So, <clears throat> you know, just keep that in mind. Here we go. So you can hear I can slow it way down. I mean, I can actually stop it. If I put a load on it for a long time, you can see I can slow it way down. Okay, so now we are going to put this one back on, and I'll show you the difference. By the way, this one actually produces a lot more torque just in general, because it can do a timing advance and all kinds of interesting things, which is interesting because it's actually a smaller controller. It's just the way it functions with this motor. Eh, it seems to work pretty well. It was extremely hard to get configured, but once I got it figured out, it seems to be okay. Real test is when I'm cutting circuit boards. All right, let me connect it. Okay, another thing about this controller is that it runs better at slower speeds. So at 50, it's like barely moving. The other one wouldn't run this slow at all. And even at this speed, you can hear it. It has less torque, of course, but it has some torque. So 70 on this one, you can hear it is much slower. And of course, I can just jam it like that. Now, to get the equivalent RPM, it's... Uh, Somewhere around, I'm going to have to do it on my computer, somewhere around 150, yeah, here we go. So now you'll be able to hear it do the, do the same thing. So you can't really hear it because I can't grab it because it's spinning, it's spinning so fast. Um, slow down a little bit. You can hear when I let go, it revs up. So if I try to squeeze it, it's constantly trying to keep a solid RPM. So, turn this back off. So anyway, um, it's it's got its pros and cons, to be honest with you, and I kind of like it and I kind of don't. But at the end of the day, um, I'm going to use it for a while and find out if it's better or not. So, time to add some capacitors. Okay, after some work, here is the capacitor bank. So you might ask, why would you do it like that? It specifically says to mount it directly across the leads. So now I'm going to just put the some heat shrink around this and call it good. And there's that piece.
Oh well, temporarily I've got the capacitor bank on here. Seems to be fine and uh, seems to be working well. It took me a long time to reconfigure this thing to get it to really run right. At about 90% uh, of speed or something it would act really funny so I ended up changing the um, the acceleration, the free, they call it freewheeling. Uh, it was on and I turned it off and that solved my problem so I don't know hopefully these capacitors the idea behind putting this many capacitors is for every 20 centimeters of wire you put an extra capacitor now they want you to put them in the wire you know all the way back to the power supply but I can't really do that so um, I've seen other people do this where they just bank them all up against here and call it good so whatever as long as it doesn't ruin the due electronics then so be it the duet I guess I should say then so be it all right what's up guys I was just messing around with something real quick so the um, integration of the map is built into the web interface now and I was probing the bed and basically what I've got let me move this out of the way Basically what I've got is some tape on here. It's, you know, really thin tape, but I put it here as a T. Now if you look at the axis orientation, it's like this. So, the this is Y and towards me is X. And so you can see how it's laid out. I wanted to see if my, my probe that I've been using, that I built from scratch, is, uh, you know, good enough to detect this very thin piece of tape because it should be able to. So if you look at the, the height map, it's a bit difficult to see, but you can indeed see, you can see the axis orientations there, so it's just like that. You can see right through there is the top piece of tape, and right through here is the bottom piece of tape. It is quite difficult to see actually, but it is there. You can really see that one nicely. Um, and then you can see some other deviation but yeah not too bad not too bad at all I found out by playing with this thing over some time now just running it repetitively and changing things and running it and changing things um, because of the location of my probe anytime I get outside of a hundred millimeter radius so that's two hundred millimeter round anytime I get side outside of that um, on this side of the bed, it starts getting really high, like almost, uh, mm, I guess, above 0.25 of a millimeter, according to this this chart. So, anyway, just thought that was uh, something interesting I was trying. This is just regular scotch tape, and it's, uh, you know, its layer height is, is very tiny. Probably you won't focus on that glass, but anyway. Okay. Just a briefing, something I did, something I recorded, and now it's on my hard drive. And for your viewing pleasure, there it is with no tape. You can see how the edges dip down. They're 0.1 millimeter there, that's actually quite a lot. But uh, this is just a map of what the physical space looks like and then it adjusts this space and it's pretty cool because you can actually hold on a point like that and you can get measurements for each point so the tape uh, was here and here and you can see now it's not there Ta -da! All right, so now you guys know kind of what I'm doing here. Um, I got the laser module in, and I'm going to be playing with that eventually. I don't even know when yet. But I've got some circuit boards that I want to make. Matter of fact, this one right here is actually the extruder circuit board. Little changes still to make, but that's basically the board. It's a 4-inch by 5-inch board. I could probably make it smaller on this side, but... Uh, that's included with the LCD and everything on there. So this is the first board I'm actually going to try to cut um, because I think it's just a it's a good thing to test on. I got a bunch of new cutters as well. 
Um, and these things are just crazy sharp. Let me find, uh, let me find the V-tip ones. So check these, check these things out. These are from Think and Tinker. There's the part number on there. And these things are just really stupid sharp. Look at that. So these are uh, a V-tip cutter, but they're dual-sided. So they got I'm cutting from both sides instead of just one, which means the system is more balanced and everything's better. So uh, that's that. Uh huh. I also forgot to show these cutters. These are specific for cutting the fiberglass board. These things are sharp. I mean, just look at the look at the tips on those things. Anyway, so yes. Uh, this is also another one. Here's one I didn't touch, which looks a lot more shiny. That, my friends, is sharp. But the tip is a little bit bigger than what I'd like. This is good for um, big circuit boards, but for some of the really fine traced stuff, I'm going to have to use different cutters. Okay, well, um, like I said, I just wanted to make this a brief update, but what I really wanted to get a, uh, you know, across in this video is the fact that I've been working on this project, but not necessarily making it in a sequence. So I had OSD numbers, one through like 20 or whatever we are up to now. And then I started working on the spindle and other things, and I labeled them differently instead of ordering them like I have been, because I think it's easier to find. Um, so I, I'm including those in the playlist, but I got to get into the notion of actually, you know, like the um, the vacuum system could have been a number on that playlist, uh, it actually labeled that way, but I didn't label it that way. And I did that just because if somebody was looking for this, it's not so specific. So I don't know if that's good or bad, but that's what I did. Uh, yep. So that's just a brief update. I just wanted to give you, you know, what I was doing. Peace and love. God bless. Have a good day. Please leave a comment, and I normally don't say this, but do share these videos. It helps. Okay. Peace out.